Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So far in the previous modules we have been talking more about the climate, climate responsive building, you know building envelopes we talked about the heat transfer, we talked about thermal comfort, we also talked about thermal adaptation, design of shading system, properties of glazing systems. Now we will take a look at energy efficiency and we will touch upon what building simulation is all about. As a part of this particular course. I may not be able to exhaustively give you hands on tutorials on simulations, but I will introduce you to the concept of energy efficiency and how do we compute energy efficiency and simulate, what is the basic concept behind building simulation, what are the various tools available, where to apply and how to apply. You will be getting a basic idea about these things. Primarily I will be covering energy use and energy efficiency in buildings, type of simulation tools and I will be giving you a demonstration of one of the leading energy simulation tools, we will be looking at it, the quick demonstration will be provided. Before getting into you know energy and energy simulation, we use you know energy primarily for comfort conditioning that is first thing, it can be the use of fans or it can be the use of air conditioners or heaters depends on the climate and the indoor condition requirements of indoor conditions, thermal conditions. So, first is for comfort conditioning, then for appliances. So, typically when you look at the energy load in buildings, we talk about appliance load or connected loads, it can be from your laptop computers to a household kitchen equipment like you know ovens and microwaves or refrigerators. So, two major things go in, one is appliance load, second is a comfort conditioning load. We are more interested as you know as a climate and climate responsive designers, we are more interested in the comfort conditioning part of it, how much really we are spending energy to condition the whole building to be thermally comfortable. So far as I said we have been talking about thermal comfort, but there is a threshold beyond which the building cannot offer much. Say we, we saw some climate examples where even with all passive strategies put in place 20 to 30 percent of the occupied hours you will need conditioning, even a best possible design would need some amount at least minimum of a use of the fan ceiling fans. So, in these cases we have to really look at where to start optimizing, is there further any optimization method, one goes with directly the efficiency of the system itself, say when you buy an air conditioner, what is the ER and you know efficiency ratio of the system itself, whether it is 3 star rated, whether it is 5 star rated and what is the efficiency it has to offer, it is like how much power it is taking and how much amount of cooling energy it is producing, same with the heaters as well. Then as a designer we are concerned about how do we make our building envelope itself, do we need to insulate it, do we need to provide more you know thermally sealed envelopes or do we have to enhance ventilation in some cases, what is that we need to do. Now let us look at the context of simulation, there are lot of benchmarks, now even you know benchmarks are being developed say for commercial buildings for example, there are standard benchmarks available, different standards provide different benchmarks different building typology say for a 24 hour operated building versus a 8 hour operational building like for example bureau of energy efficiency provides a you know interesting case of baseline <coughs> for healthcare building say if you want to you know find out what is the efficiency you need to provide for an hospital building you can choose the number of beds there are certain criteria you can look online based on that it says this is a baseline criteria and how do you improve it likewise for residential building, it is a very challenging thing to define baselines for residential building, energy, you know, performance baselines. There are a lot of research and projects going around to evolve certain baselines for this. Coming to the simulation part of it, simulation is primarily mimicking the actual performance of building so that you can derive quick and cost effective solutions rather than doing a field test and trial and pilot monitoring. Before all that, you minimize your effort instead of doing 10 different tests, you do the whole thing in your system, virtually model it, let it behave the same way or at least closely mimic what the actual building is doing. Then test all the options here, choose 2 or 3, test it in field and then pick the right one. So, what is the context for simulation? You can do simulations for 3 different parties, 
first let us say occupants interest as a building occupant you will need a good visual comfort visual acuity is needed you need thermal comfort you need a good air quality you need acoustical quality ergonomic factors are there spatial design factors are there out of all this primarily we do simulations for visual performance you can do daylight or artificial lighting simulation you do simulation for thermal comfort yes air quality also simulations are done acoustical quality lot of simulations are done the next perspective you know perspective is owner's interest see if you are a simulation consultant you are working for a building's owner you will be you know the owner will be interested in an optimum investment versus lower operational cost so the result of your simulation will vary or the way you have to present your results will vary you know what kind of results you have to look for for example building owner may not be really interested to know what is actual temperature and its variation in the space but he will be interested in what is the system you are asking me to buy what is the investment i have to make and what is a minimization or reduction in operational cost and what is my payback period it will be more commercial for a building's owner whereas if you are you know trying to pacify or you are trying to convince the building's tenant or an occupant you will have to talk in terms of this will improve your visual comfort this will improve your thermal comfort this will also you know you also have to talk about energy efficiency of course it is not exclusive but the primary thing would be about comfort inside the building owners interest yes of course owners are interested in comfort but their primary interest is what else is needed so you have done this now i have to invest this much and this many years i'll be getting the payback then the primary area today where lot of simulations are happening is for these environmental things where you know we have to prove energy efficiency you take any code like griha lead any international code as well ecbc any compliances you want to say you have to prove the building is efficient by say 20% 30% relating to the baseline building so ideally you have a base case or you generate a base case you put your building now compare this with the base case try to prove that this is 20% efficient 30% efficient you talk more about energy energy efficiency and partly about comfort as well then there are also simulations which are done for environmental impact like co2 emissions you can simulate what is the overall life cycle energy life cycle assessment is separate then life cycle energy can be totally estimated tools are getting you know more and more capabilities earlier tools which just had you know simple comfort simulations now have energy as a dimension apart from energy they also predict the co2 emissions you can enter input lot of values with which you will also be able to predict environmental impact and they also have a cost dimension where you can do the casting cost benefit assessment can also be done so you know before getting hands on with the simulation you should understand the context and the party for which you are simulating the process remains the same there is no change in the methodology the kind of input output remains the same but the way you express it and what you derive out of the results that is considerably going to vary depending on who you do the work for as for building simulation building means it's a thermodynamic object heat exchanges are happening moment you put a window there is a heat exchange which is happening from a opaque wall you are taking 10% and you are calling this as a transparent or translucent fenestration then the heat exchanges are going to vary apart from the window then you are providing a frame you are changing certain things you are providing a shading to the window the thermodynamic you know balance is considerably getting affected essentially you are changing a equation you have to look at the whole building as a long stretch of equation with which any single modification is going to change a variable in the equation it accommodates a constantly changing set of energy flows between different thermal zones when you say thermal zone each room or each space in a building we refer to as thermal zones as i said it is a thermodynamic object each room means a zone which is a thermal zone there are two types thermal as well as it can be non thermal zones say if you are defining a specific shading system or something like that it doesn't have to be a zone by itself we will look at some of these things in the demonstration there will be a constant set of changing energy flows it is not static you are talking about dynamic every minute every hour there is going to be change in external condition change in internal condition and the gradient of heat flow is also going to vary what is a model as i said it is a you know simplified representation of a mathematical you know expression it is representing a real world system or an event as i said we have to keep in mind four important things what are the desired results are we looking for comfort 
are we looking for a detailed assessment of air flow or are we looking for a energy estimate or are we interested in the casting. So, what are our primary you know results which are essential. Then what design questions we want to answer? It can be a lot of what if questions, what if there is a shading, what if there is a insulated glass, what if the wall is insulated. So, there are a lot of what if questions you can answer using simulation, but specific to the question your choice of simulation tool will vary and the type of analysis you do with the same tool itself can vary. Now, tools are you know capable of various different aspects, they are in module. So, if you want to use say for example, you want to find out what is the efficiency of the window in terms of ventilation, the tool choice itself can be different and the type of analysis you do with the tool will be different and the presentation of the results will be different. How expensive and time consuming can it get? This is a crucial question especially if you are in the field, if somebody asks you for a quick energy estimate versus a detailed energy simulation result. Whether you want a calibrated simulation or you just need a validated simulation or you do not even need to validate it. As I said there are three steps here, first is a very you know rough estimate of energy. If somebody is asking I have a 1000 square foot building, single story building, there is a large space, office space, I need to find out what is the efficiency of a particular system, insulating it, not insulating it. So, you do not have much estimate, you just know the climate location you know the space and the type of occupancy. So, with that you can derive a very rough estimate, but it will not be any closer to the actual performance data, but still it is an apple to apple comparison. You have the base case, you have the predicted case, more or less you can say there is 5 percent efficiency, 10 percent efficiency. The next level is a validated simulation. You will need an actual number of same building or a similar building type, then you can say the predictions are more or less valid. If the actual number is 1000, I am getting somewhere between 900 to 1100. So, there is a little bit of say 10 percent variation in the prediction accuracy. You are kind of validating the trend summer to winter to monsoon, how the trend in energy consumption or comfort or temperatures vary. So, validated simulation. The third is calibrated simulation, where you have an actual building, this is running you are trying to help the facility manager to improve the efficiency of the building, you are getting real time data continuously, it is getting fed, fed into the system. Now, you run the simulation, you kind of tune the simulation tool to predict as closely as possible the actual results. This is a process called calibration. So, you are calibrating the whole model to predict as closely as possible to the actual system, then you alter various possibilities, it can be building insulation, it can be change of operation procedures, anything like that, addition, introduction, you know, deletion of certain features, then you find out what is the impact of it. The last thing, how to communicate the information. Lot of people do simulation, there are lot of, you know, software tools and each tool also customize and give you a report. If you say print report, any leading tool you take, you can finally, after simulating, you can say print a report it will customize and give you a standard format template in which all the results are sequentially presented. But is that exhaustive thing is what we need or we just need one or two aspects of it which needs to be highlighted. So, what information you pick from the whole simulation, you know after you simulate you will find that you will have an ocean of you know you will be having an ocean of data. So, what kind of information you pick from that? and how do you communicate it? You have to do certain post processing, the thing called post processing is very crucial in the success of simulation results. Typically, you will get certain breakups, like you know what is a HVAC load, this is like comfort conditioning load, then what is a lighting load, what is a equipment load and within that you can get certain you know segments. So, if you want to do energy efficiency, first thing you need to do is find out in which area you are working on. Say let me give you an example total equipment load is this, imagine this is an office building, you have computers plus printing and you know reprography machines, if it is around you know 30 percentage, you may not have very big control on these internal loads or kind of connected loads. Yes, to certain extent you can advise that you can minimize it, but this is not the field where you have a direct control on. You will have control on two things, one you will have control on the comfort conditioning side number 2 on the lighting loads. So, for example, change of one light to the other you know light, say from a fluorescent light to CFL or to sorry to LED lights, then you will say 5 percent reduction in the lighting load, 
10 percent reduction in the lighting load or introduction of a sensor, an occupancy sensor or a light sensor, you know daylight sensor where it controls on off or dimming control is provided. Then you will say I have minimized the lighting load in this kind of, you know in the, to this much amount of magnitude. Then you take a look at the HVAC load, HVAC load is partly due to the building envelope, partly due to the internal occupancy, internal loads we call, then it also depends on the efficiency of the system. So, in three contexts you can do. So, in case you are working on building envelope, you have to optimize the envelope itself, the choice of software and the kind of results you need to pick from the same tool can be different, while if you are interested in the internal loads, the choice can be different. If you are interested in the equipment side of it, you want to model the fans and pumps component to component, the choice of tool or the level of detail you work in the same tool could be considerably different. There are different software tools available, you have, you know today it is pretty nice that you have exhaustive tools for daylight and artificial lighting modeling, you have CFD tools, fluid dynamic tools for airflow modeling, both air conditioned spaces as well as <coughs> naturally ventilated spaces. Then you have tools for building component level analysis, for example, if you want to you know estimate the U value or heat transfer for example, through a frame. Then you have a specific component tool through which you can assess how much heat gets transferred through a building's frame or you want to assess what is the airflow distribution through a particular diffuser. So, specific component level you can analyze. Overall HVAC analysis, you have lot of tools today. Then building thermal analysis, heat exchanges, one dimension, two dimension or three dimensional or whole building simulation tools are also available. There are today few leading packages which give you combination of these modules. You can buy certain modules or they will give you all the modules you can use or you do not have to use certain modules, some of them are custom made. As I said there are specified, you know spe specialized component tools, we have to quickly take a look at them. For example, as I said calculation of heat flow through frames the crucial you know thing, it is a weaker link, we have things for the whole building, whole wall things, but again if you have to get into the details of the frame for example, you can have a specific tool, set of tools are available through which commonly used this is tool called Therm, T-H-E-R-M, where you know a detailed frame model can be made, indoor outdoor conditions can be set, it is not a whole building thing, it is just a element or component modeling tool, then you can also model thermal bridges, 2D heat transfer through window, wall interfaces, the junctions, joints can be modeled, airflow models can be built, fenestration systems can be modeled. So, it depends on the level to which you have to work on. To give a overall picture, in the site level you have certain tools, then in the building level you have cooling efficiency and a quick estimate can be you know made, component level to the level of you know glass frame specific assemblies you can model. You can have tools for energy efficiency, overall split up can be given or indoor comfort modeling in terms of air flow, in terms of thermal distribution, radiation or lighting levels, acoustic calculations, anything can be modeled or overall operational efficiency and environmental impact. You can choose, pick and choose tools that you actually need. A general overview of the process associated, the first thing starts with the database. If you have to do a, you know, good modeling. The best practice is to first develop a data set. You need three different types of data. First is a material data. You will need thermophysical properties. What is the density of the material? What is its conductivity? Specific heat, you know, emissivity, absorptivity, surface properties. These basic material data is a primary requirement. Next is the construction data. How do you construct wall systems? Which wall systems you will primarily use? what is the thickness, what are the different layers associated, what insulation you are using, where are you putting it. So, you can kind of make a library which we call of the construction systems, wall system, window system, you can model the frames separately, then you can constitute a whole window, you know glass frame assembly. Next crucial thing is the climate data, you can generate your own climate data or for standard specific major locations in any country, say if you take India around 30 to 35 locations, you have weather data easily available. Weather data I mean or climate data I mean an hourly data, most of the software tool, detailed software tools will require an hour to hour weather data, 8760 hours for the whole year, the weather data is required. Some standard data are available or you can also develop your own weather data sets. 
The next step is, so once you have the database, you have a library from which you can pick. Next will be the composition of the model. So, first you need the basic drawings, physical dimensions and drawings are needed. Some tools allow you to import the drawings. Some of the tools you will have to model it from scratch, from coordinates you have to start modeling. So, you need a basic geometry, you need the attributes which sides are exposed, which is used, which is not used. Then the construction details can be picked from here. Important thing is the operational details. How many people are there? When are they using the building? Whether they are opening, closing the windows, they are operating the shades, what is the set point temperature? Is it remaining whole through the day? Is it remaining the same? Or are they modifying it? So, you are starting to put in equipment, you are starting to put in occupants in the virtual model. So, occupants, lighting, equipment and how things get modulated with time. You can feed the schedules very clearly. Then it goes to developing shading systems, then putting sensors, if there are certain sensors where you know things will be controlled, is there a lighting sensor, is there a temperature control, it can be modeled. After this, there is an option, if you are really going for an airflow modeling or specific software where you are also taking a naturally ventilated airflow, then you have to define something called a flow connection. It will involve nodes and connections connected through components. Say you have a room, one single room you are modeling, there will be for example, I will call it a node in the center of the room, there will be one more node in the outside, it will be connected through a component which is window in this case, an open window can be a component, open door can be a component, a crack which is an infiltration connection can be a component. So, there is two nodes, internal node and external node which is connected through a component. So, this modeling happens, fluid flow network modeling. Some of the tools allow you to skip this. Some of them, if you do not need an airflow thing, it is a sealed air conditioned building, you can avoid this. Then the controls, how people use it, what are the sensors, actuators, what time AC turns on, turns off, occupancy sensor, light sensor. It involves modeling these things. Then you do an integrated simulation. Now, you have virtually modeled the whole system, you are letting the whole machine run. It will be giving you results. As I said, the major challenge is taking these results, picking the right information from the large repository of results available and then post processing it. Post processing is a crucial step in this whole process. It is a complex interaction as we said, you know, building envelope it interacts with whole lot of thing, external environment is there, rules, regulations are there plus internal operation pattern is there. So, you know, it is a complex intervening thing which most of the tools today available leading tools are able to take care of. We will mainly be focusing on one tool today, which is energy plus, which is a you know called a engine. This functions as a engine or the core for lot of leading commercial software tools. The tools available today are front ends of energy plus. Energy plus is a core engine. I will be showing you in the demo the screen of energy plus how it looks. You can either do direct modeling in energy plus, which is a freeware it gets updated very constantly, very you know uh, 5 to 6 times a year you get updates, it is a very frequently updated tool, it has come a long way. It helps you model heating cooling loads, lighting loads, ventilation you can model and other energy flows can also be modeled. You know newer version of it, versions of it allows you for cost based modeling, you can also get certain environmental quantities, CO2 emissions etc can be obtained. This is a basic core lot of leading front you know commercial softwares take this energy plus as a core either it can be standalone or there are cloud based tools but the front end commercial front end is sold to you it has a simulation manager it has a basic heat mass balance simulation then you have a building description then you have the calculation result this is a engine core engine you have commercial front ends which will interface with it the basic advantage you get is energy plus does not have a very good graphic interface, you have to go with numerical inputs one by one. Whereas, these third party tools have graphic interfaces where they kind of you know pre built libraries are available. So, you can pick and choose, it is very simple, more or less simplified approaches that is where you are pay, that is what you are actually paying for. Lot of tools are available starting from SketchUp, you have Open Studio, if you have SketchUp, you can directly use energy plus or there is a tool called open studio with which it tags energy plus along. So, you do not have to spend really a lot of money to model or do energy simulation. Then you have leading tool design builder which is available which is also getting you know revised quite often. 
lot of templates, libraries are available, it interfaces well with energy plus, then ecotect also interfaces, but you do not find much updates for recent energy plus version. Every time there is an upgrade in energy plus, these tools also update themselves, so as to tag with it more accurately. We will now go to the demo of these software tools, couple of them I will be demonstrating, I will be primarily looking at energy plus, I will show you what is the interface looking like, then I will be showing you how design builder software tool looks like and what are the major components and how do you, you know what is the interface and how to work along with design builder. Now, we will take a look at energy plus, which is one of the core engines that I was mentioning about. There are two, three other things, the other commonly used, you know, core engine is ESPR, that is environmental system performance by research. It forms the basis, you know, basic core for software tools like IESVE. Now, we are looking at energy plus, which forms the core engine for open studio, which tags with SketchUp or design builder these things run on our auto you know autodesk's green building studio these primarily run on energy plus as their core so moment you you know you this is freely available for download the current version is 8.7 it gets updated quite frequently minor to major updates are happening version updates like 7 to 8 8 to 9 there will be a major migration in the certain coding patterns also the you know kind of data exchanges will slightly differ but then minor variations and bug fixings will happen within the same, you know, revisions among the same version itself, say 8.1 to 8.2, there will be minimum variations. So, once you, you know, download, install it, you will get a screen like this. Once you launch it, this is called energy plus launch. This is like a launch pad. You can run simulations on this. Essentially, you have to choose an input file, if you have one already or you can create a new one. You can also do group simulations, say you have 100 files together, you can tag them together and simulate it. You can simulate one file with 10 different weather locations. Like you know, you also have few other utilities, we will look at them. But before this, how to create a simulation thing itself, how to virtually model the building. There is something called IDF editor, click on this, this will open a screen. This is what we call IDF editor. Here I am opening IDF for an existing file, so you have, you know, you are finding certain inputs which are already there, you know, certain things are already built in. If you open a blank file, say if you want a new IDF file, this will be an empty file here, you will find a series of inputs starting from, you know, simulation parameters like building, shadow calculation, what is that you need, what time step you need the calculation set. Then you also have location and climate, you can define the site's location, you can start doing latitude and longitude. So, here if you want to input, say you know take an example here, location and climate, I want to input the location, I will say new object, no object gets added up, say I can start typing new Delhi, then I will give the latitude, longitude here, I will start entering the values one by one, time zone I have to enter, elevation I have to enter, everything is manually you have to be feeding it. Similarly, the next thing would be the schedule, what type of schedule, when people are coming, what is a day, daily, you know, morning to evening, hourly schedule, what is a daily, how many days a week people are working, how many weeks in a year, what are the holidays, you know, what is a working pattern basically. So, you define, this is like defining library, like we discussed in the earlier methodology, first we are, you know, sort of defining the whole setup we are saying this is algorithm I want to use, what is a kind of you know heat transfer algorithm, say there are different types here, you can choose whichever you know which is more appropriate. Then comes defining the library in terms of location and climate, the site conditions basically including the ground reflections, what is the terrain and all that. Then you can define the schedule library, then the construction element library, you can start defining the material. So, you can say the name of the material, say now, say let us say it is brick, what is the roughness, what is the thickness of the material, what is the conductivity, density, specific heat, thermal absorption, some numbers you will find are pre-built, you can modify them as you want. Then you have window components, you can define roof, vegetation, you can define air gap. Each and everything as you look at it goes by Defi defining in terms of numbers, it is like filling up an, a you know a huge excel sheet. Then you can define your construction, 
So, you have a pre-built set of material, I have brick, I have plaster, I have you know say insulation layer, then now I can define construction saying the layer 1 is say you know external finish, then there is a plaster, then there is say insulation, then there is brick, then there is internal plaster. So, I can define it layer by layer, you do not have to calculate the overall property that it will do, but you will be defining layer to layer. Then comes to defining the geometry you will be defining zone by zone. If you look at this, you will have to define the x origin, y origin, z origin. So, it is essentially like a coordinate system, a very old graphic editing tool kind of thing where if you are more comfortable, if you have the coordinates, if the building is relatively simple, you can simply get typing these numbers, you will still have a foolproof system software which is giving you good results. Element by element, you can define, then shading definitions can be done. It goes all the way up to defining the whole HVAC system itself, starting from coil, starting from fan, pump, motors, everything can be defined here, heat recovery system, what types. It does not mean you have to fill all these parameters, like we saw the earlier example which I had opened, not all the you know blocks are filled, some of them are left empty, the software still allows you to leave certain things which you do not need to be unfilled, you do not have to fill anything, they have filled a few things, they have left certain things open. This is where you have to act smart saying, what is my required or desired result and what am I really modeling, where am I detailing. If certain detail is not required, I would suggest you leave that blank, do not attempt to it. Certain things are essential, only do that and what is relevant to you. Accordingly, even in HVAC system, some of them are left blank, blank here, they have a thermostat settings, they have a connection loop. Then finally, you define what are your output variables that you are requiring, what are the sets of output. Say here they have asked for outdoor air summary, zone temperature summary, mean radiant temperature, system, sensible cooling energy, heating energy, like you know they have asked for 7 different results. You can also have energy meters, how much is the energy consumption. You can also do casting, you can do life cycle cost assessment here, you can input you know the currency variables, you can include the tariff, you can include certain you know LCC related terms, then you will be able to get what is a payback period as well. This computes things, it also has parametric things, you can define a logic, you can set a defined set of conditions, then it will be doing a parametric iterative simulation. Now, this is energy plus. Once you are done with modeling it, you can choose a weather data, I am not modifying it much, you can simply say simulate to close this, I am not saving any changes, just saying simulate. It will quickly run, it just took 4 seconds to simulate it, but you know you will find the results like this, ESO is a common result folder where it is all text data, txt files, you can open it in excel, you can do analysis if you are comfortable with, but this is what essentially you will get results. You can look at the graphic of the model that you have built, it will be showing you a dxf file where you can take a view of what model actually you have made, because you have inputted in terms of coordinates. So, it will give you the model here, you can look at the model, this is what is the model that we were simulating, 4 zones are there, certain fenestration components and you will be able to see your results. Now, let us take a look at Design builder, which I said is a front end, commercial front end of energy plus. Now, this gives you a much more flexibility and ease of use in terms of modeling. I will quickly create a new file, I have taken Delhi as a weather file. There are lot of built in templates, you can choose one of the templates 
or you can go for a blank template. You can do types of analysis, it can vary. So, let me quickly create a file and show you what is inside this tool. So, this essentially gives you a graphic user interface where you can start building your thermal model or a building model, virtual building model. It is not as flexible as SketchUp because this is not a graphic model, this is a thermal model. So, there are certain you know restrictions available in case of the shape, form, the type of modeling that you do. And one more thing you have to keep in mind, the more complex you make your model, you start doing intricate detailing, it is a thermodynamic object there will be more and more heat exchanges which are happening and your modeling time will be drastically increased. Some of the models the tool cannot even handle. So, that would be that large kind of a mathematical equation or expression to be handled by the software. Here actually you have a basic thing if you want to start modeling a building you simply say add a new building. Again it will take you through a series of templates what type of considerations, what are the default data, what is, is it an office building or is it something else, what type of construction, everything as I said is a pre-built template. You can actually build your own template before starting to model or you can start the model then tweak around with the templates. It will customize and give me a quick you know template on which I can do further modeling. It is preparing the building data, assembling all the libraries because as such I have chosen the building type, what is the construction you know type etcetera. So, here I have the height, it is a extruded shape, I can simply draw a model, finish the edges. So, it has already put in certain window and other elements here, I am not going to detail it out further. So, this is the model for your information different you know levels are available, first is a site level, then this is a building level, this is where we are, then if you go to the block level, there will be different zones. So, now there is only one zone, so the zone level this is in further in detail. If you click on the zone further, you can access the roof, you know this is a floor, this is a roof, <coughs> wall, if you want to edit further in the wall, <coughs> you can reach out for the window you know accordingly. Right now it has taken a template, it has fixed the windows, it has spread it through. Now you can start editing the libraries which you have already defined. You can have the activity library where you can edit, you can have the construction library where you can edit materials, this is construction then the materials can be edited. Then there is an opening library in which the glazing frame systems can be edited. <coughs> Either you can input a whole u value or you can model it component to component. Say take a look at this construction template, <coughs> if I want to model the external wall, I can edit it here. First it shows the wall has four number of layers, brick layer, insulation, concrete block and gypsum plastering. Further if I want to edit these things, I can further get into it, the next window will appear. Here I can model or modulate the conductivity specific heat or density. I can modify the surface property, I can define whether there are some green elements, I can input embodied data, I can input whether it is a phase change material, it is a type of you know <coughs> capacitive insulation which changes phase to absorb heat. Then you can input cast data, instead you can define the wall definition itself in a simplified way, whether you want to define layers or the whole thing you can define in terms of setting a u value for the whole wall. You can just say the whole u value of the wall is something, say if my u value is 0.9, I can simply say it is 0.9 watts per meter square Kelvin, you do not have to get into defining these layers. But of course, you cannot get a precise account of what is the heat transfer, heat exchanges happening through the envelope. If you want that detail, then go for layer based approach. If you want a quick estimate, go for a simple setting up of u value and defining with it, do not get into details of modeling age and everything. You can model infiltration, we saw the openings, you can define shading separately, frames and dividers can be modeled, you can model shading system whether it is window shading or local shading. <coughs> window shading is blinds, louvers, etcetera, 
Local shading means it is like overhang fins can be modeled. Each and every change you make will get updated in the graphic part of it. Then comes the lighting load. You can change the type of lighting. You can also define certain light, you know, lighting library. If you have enough data sheets, you can define your own light fixtures. But more or less, it has an exhaustive library which is already available. HVAC is another exhaustive, you know, section which Design Builder has. Different types of pre-built HVAC systems are available. Starting from generic like you know CAV system, VAV system, fan coil units, it goes on to even you can model the specific system up to fan and pump level, motor level, you can do the modeling if you want or you can choose from one of the existing templates. Say if you want a, you know air cooled CAV system, constant air volume system, you can simply say in right now it is fan coil unit. Let us choose say constant air volume, air cold chiller, just say click on it, the whole thing would change. You can set your operational efficiency, you can check, you know, set the efficiency of the pumps, heating cooling system, coefficient of performance, CO2 can be set. You can define an operational schedule, you have a series of schedules which are already available. If you want to modify, you can modify, again there are different types of modifying it, you can modify it you know like a detailed schedule or a day schedule or a compact schedule, it depends, you know the kind of level of detailing varies. You can also define set temperatures, at what temperature AC is on, AC is off. If you want natural ventilation, you can define natural ventilation, passive things like air tubes. You can also input certain cost variables, is there some you know renewable generation, it takes care of photovoltaic generation at the moment. Then at last you have to define what kind of results you are expecting. Do you want surface level details, like do you want surface temperature, then instead of you know 2 to 3 minutes the simulation is going to take further more time. If you want specific you know component level heat flow modeling, it is going to take a lot of time. Then if you want to define air flow, you go to the next section CFD, it again you know demands you to kind of model it much more in detail. This is with heating then cooling, then what are the specific simulation outputs? Do you want environmental factor, HVAC, energy, you want comfort? We looked at Fangers model, we looked at you know looked at Pierce's two node model, adaptive comfort model, it will give you a summary of comfort as well. So, moment you are done you know picking and choosing these things, you can do the heating cooling design it will give you a quick estimate like this is like your you know single number calculation this is not a dynamic simulation it is a quick estimate of what is a heating cooling load it will take a particular you know the day heating day where you do the calculation for heat loads cooling loads and the heating loads you will see a quick result you can also see a summary what is the design capacity what is the flow rate total cooling load sensible latent loads a rough estimate is given this is as I said it is not a hour to hour simulation, but it is a quick quantitative estimate like where HVAC engineers do it like a one number estimate, you estimate the cooling quantity UA delta T plus certain other factors radiations are taken into consideration. Once you want detailed simulation, go to the next tab, similarly you can do heating design, cooling design then comes the simulation tab, here also you have flexibility, you can do month wise simulation. So, you say if you want for 12 months or just for 2 months, just one monthly data like you get your energy bills, if that is enough, you will get that alone, the simulation is pretty faster. If you want daily number, energy consumption per day, average temperatures inside temperature per day, then you will get daily simulation, maximum, minimum and average you can get or you can go for hourly simulation, hour to hour it will give you data. If you say sub hourly, how many divisions you want, do you want it for 5 minute interval, 15 minutes interval, the more you go into detail, the more simulation time and machine capacity, computer you know simulation, the engine capacity is needed, machine capacity is needed. You can also choose specific months, say if you want, want only for say March to July, specific set of months and you only want monthly and daily data, you can be fine with it, you have a still an option of 
choosing or deleting certain additional outputs which you may want you may not want slightly it is slower than energy plus because there is a data exchange which is happening between the core and the front end but once the simulation is done this is something what you will get you can see the interval we have simulated for annual data monthly data as well as daily but if you choose hourly simulation is not done it will ask do you want to re-simulate right now i am not simulating it daily data is enough per day what is the variation in say, fuel consumption temperatures heat balance loads typically fresh air intake parameters then you it will give you a summary this can be taken into html tables useful information is presented here if you want to run parametric simulation you can define conditions i am not going to get into these things right now but essentially what you get out of design builder it's like a graphic user interface plus a simplification system which is available to you say if you are a designer if you are a student who don't want to go into the intricacies of energy plus you don't know which section to choose which section to ignore this is a quick fix solution similarly open studio also gives you flexibility it's it doesn't have this many templates built in but it is like a you know freeware you can build in your own things it takes little bit more time but still you will have a free to use thing whereas design builder though it is commercial it gives you customized templates much seamlessly you can run simulations the results are reliable because energy plus is a core engine it has been validated quite significantly validated tool predictions are more or less closer before closing the whole discussion about the demonstration and things you know you have to note that whatever accuracy and whatever precision rather we are trying to predict the building's energy you know simulation energy consumptions first let us talk about energy consumption alone the maximum accuracy we will be able to expect is of the order of 50 to 60 percentage maximum more or less most of the simulation results are 30 to 40 percent accuracy they are only one third to around 40 percent maximum accuracy you will get the data which you are you know getting on field i am saying say if you are simulating a room and you are building the room running the air conditioner or heater and finding out what is a you know similarity you will find around 40 to 50 percent similarity the rest all are uncertainties because the exact material performance can only be proved or found out when it is actually built and actually led to interact with the climate whereas when you are simulating it virtually there are a lot of con you know controlled conditions boundary conditions which are very static you don't allow them everything to model you know mod modulate dynamically with that sense these things are little more or little less, rep less representative of the actual scenario but base case versus predicted proposed case apple to apple comparison as i said it gives you a very good fair estimate of what the actual system is going to do effect of insulation effect of changing certain materials strategies this is pretty much easier to do so as a part of this course we looked at the basics of energy use where energy is used in the building what is energy efficiency what are the type of tools simulation tools available what basically is simulation and what do we try to get out of simulation tools and we also looked at demonstration of energy plus as well as design builder software tool thank you